So this cult here, Jackson Storm, Colin Jackson, is uh, just turned two uh, last week. And um, I'm blessed to have ridden his mother and love her. She's 20 this year. She just had her second foal uh, a couple days ago. And uh, I know her very well. He's out of Bliss MF and uh, is really stamped with an incredible disposition. So this is his second time I've ever put him in the round pen to do anything with him. And you will get to see what I do and how it goes. This is an example of a very sensible, very easy cult. Um, I've handled them, you know, throughout their life, but not a ton. Um, they've spent a lot of time being turned out with others and being horses. Um, I like grooming them and, you know, you'll notice when I reach across their legs, I usually touch the leg closest to me. I like to make sure I t can touch everywhere on their body. They're comfortable with it. I like to groom at liberty sometimes. Uh, teach him to kind of just focus on me and stay with me, not because I have ropes, but just because I'm working with them. And as you can see, I'm able to do pretty much everything with this colt uh, at Liberty. And he's been that way always, you know, he's learned to pick up his feet really nicely, really quickly. He, he was pretty easy, pretty trusting. Again, you can see how I make contact with the leg closer to me when I reach across them. I want to reach across them so they get accustomed to it and they're safe. And I want him to know that I am right there so that I don't get hurt because he's unaware of where I am. I love his eye. I love how he pays attention. It's soft. I brought with me a bareback pad a lunge line, a lunge whip, a halter, and lead rope, kind of a long lead rope, a rope halter, and a bag of grooming supplies. And as far as a plan for the day, I was thinking of putting the bareback pad on, see how they're comfortable with that. I've only done that once before, but I've kind of like played with them with fly masks and rags and stuff or grain bags and just throwing it on them like at liberty here and there. Um, and then probably do something with the lunge line is what I'm thinking. Like, I don't know if I'll lunge them with it, but I might just put it around them, put it around their legs, their butt, just make sure they're comfortable with different things. It's really just about expanding their horizons and giving them a lot of different experiences that build their confidence and make them safer. <laughs> prepare them in a peaceful way for the careers they will have as show horses. So I like to make two points of contact when I put a pad or saddle on a green, young, or nervous horse. So my left hand was one point of contact. Sometimes it's just as simple as my left elbow touches them and then the pad. Making two points of contact, I have found, really reduces uh, surprise and flightiness when you do go to put something on a horse that isn't, you know, totally gentle. So again, point of contact, and then the second. I like to move it backwards, forward. This colt clearly does not care at all that it's on him. So I'm kind of checking about that. He says he doesn't care, and I'm able to just keep rolling.
I don't mind that he's eating grass and nibbling because he's staying just calm. It's nice that it's there, but he's totally listening to me. He's not ignoring me, so it's fine with me if he nibbles. I like that he wants to put these things in his mouth and play because it means he feels safe and comfortable. There's a limit to how much I'll let young horses chew on things. I don't, you know, want them to have a habit of chewing. That's not fun for anyone. But I do want them to feel safe. And one way that baby anythings learn about the world around them is with their mouths. So I'm good with them learning with their mouth. I'm not good with them getting habitual, becoming habitual chewers on anything. I will correct that. Here, since he was so comfortable with it, I'm going to put a cinch on him. I don't think he's ever, I think the one other time I messed with him with the saddle pad and the round pen a couple months ago, I don't think I cinched it up. So this would be a first time. So... I cinch it tight enough that if he were to spook, run off, blow up, it's not going to fall and cause greater fear or greater issue, but it's not very tight in that for his first experience, he's not going to feel like he's being, you know, cut in half or anything. It's as tight as it needs to be to stay where it is, which with a bareback pad is not nearly as tight as the saddle needs to be. Now I'm just kind of throwing objects and things around from a distance so that, you know, he gets used to things moving. He's going to also throw things around. <laughs> things fall by their legs all the time. You don't want them blowing up. <laughs> Babies are fun. The other day, I was going to go take him into the arena and trot with him in hand over a couple, like, cross rails or cavalettis or something, play around out there. And I walked past the wash rack, and there's, like, a patch of grass under where the hose goes. And I walked, and all of a sudden, he you know, stopped and I thought he was going to stop and grab a bite of grass or something or attempt to go do that. And he stopped because there was a broom next to the grass and he picked up the broom, like mid, mid walk. <laughs> Just had to giggle. Babies are, they're a lot of fun in the right uh, situation, the right environment, the right hands. So again, one other time has he ever been asked to lunge in his life. That was a couple months ago, just kind of showing him the basic idea. I'm considering the idea in September um, with either him or my other colts or I don't know or maybe neither of them when I'm considering the idea of the Sally B. Wheeler West Coast two-year-old in hand class um, if I decide to do that you know they've got to you know right now they get a free feed grass hay and alfalfa on top of that and their salts um, and they're mostly just turned out. But if I decide to do that, I'll have to bucket him and give him extra vitamins and minerals and stuff to get him a little fatter and more filled out muscularly. And 
I'll have to exercise him a couple days a week. Probably for that, I'll just pony him on the trails or hike with him primarily. But he'll have to look a lot less ranchy. And I'll probably have to move pens with him because he likes to stick his head through and rub out his mane. And so right now he's allowed to be a little ranchy baby. But if I decide that I'm going to show him in the fall, and it's not too far away, a month or two, that I really got to start considering making him look like a show horse, which is a different set of um, standards at home to get looking that way. Part of my decision to show them is if it will benefit them, if they have the mentality to enjoy the, the you know, going to the show at this age. If they don't, there's no point. This one might... The other one might too. So this is cool because um, I really like his attention on me. He offered to stop here. The other time I asked him to stop, this time he offered to stop. Uh, and I rewarded it by letting him take a break. Now I'm going to tell him to continue because I don't want him to just stop whenever he wants. He thinks just like whenever is good. And now I'm going to tell him to continue, but I definitely let him do it just the one time to reward that he is paying attention to me so now I kind of keep the energy in that one area again horses tend to stop in the same spot uh, that's how their memory works here I again asked him to stop and he's listening fantastically So again, I don't think I've ever done this with him before. If I have, it was just the one time in the round pen a couple months ago, but I don't always remember what I do, but I really haven't worked with them per se. I've just handled them <clears throat> the way that I do it. So here what I'm doing is putting the rope around their legs and pulling it and teaching them to give to that kind of pressure. Not resist it, not be afraid, but soften and give. Yep. Great. Just perfect. You can teach a horse to lead by their foot. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Just put a rope on their foot and walk them like it's a halter. And they'll do it. Not because you actually have control, but just because horses are so willing and so easy to work with when you go about it in the right way. And it depends on the horse. But So here, this is a cool exercise. You know, he kind of getting himself wound up because it makes sense to him to come towards me when he feels pressure. But that's not what this is asking. It's asking him to listen to the rope on his face. Kind of be the beginnings of teaching rain aids. And I don't mind at all if he like freaks out and gets all tangled up. That's why we're doing this. That's fine. That's part of the learning process sometimes. It's nice that he's not worried about feeling the rope on his hind end. And here, this was quite easy. So a lot of times I would repeat the other direction since he struggled a hair with it. But, you know, he'll have a lot of time over the next couple of years to repeat that. I'm not too worried about drilling home anything just having a basic understanding of using your brain no matter what happens just think <laughs> it's cute he's just feeling playful and trusting same thing Never asked for this before, but I've picked up his feet plenty. He's had plenty of trims. He understands the idea. Mm 
And these colts too, at this age, they grow so much. So like a few weeks ago, you know, he's chubby. And then right now he's a little ribby. And then in a few more weeks, he might be chubby again. And it actually looks like his wither caught up with his hind end again. But two weeks ago, he was really butt high. I don't think round pen exercise is very healthy for growing young bodies very often. Um, that's not what I'm doing. It's, it's mental what I'm doing here. So I don't want him to just go in circles, go in circles, go in circles, but I want him to think. The fun thing with this colt, as he has such a good brain, I'm able to step it up a little and ask him for energetic stuff and have him keep his sensibilities about him. You know, that's fun for me. I like that he turns to the inside because he's paying attention and really hooked and engaged. You know, so I, I, I consider right now, I just got his energy up, up, up. So if I just walk straight up to him and threw the pad on him, he might feel flighty because I just totally lifted his adrenaline up for a moment. So I want to present the idea to him, make sure he feels relaxed and safe and calm again, and then I'll put the pad on him. I'm not just going to go throw it on him after his energy level has come up. That might be asking for him to be spooky. And I really want to set him up for success time and time and time again and get a habit of success. <laughs> He's never been led without a rope before. He's like, what? Your hand is so close to me. So I just can keep my pressure, maybe a little bit of like a bumping motion. So it's not just pulling. It's like pull, bump, pull, bump, pull, bump. And then he came and he got a release. That's our session.